You're sitting across from someone offering you what seems like the deal of a lifetime. Here's how it works, they say, sliding a crisp $100 bill across the table. We'll flip a coin. Heads, your money grows by 80%. Tails, you lose only 50%. Want to play? Simple math says you're getting a 15% average gain per flip. Your mental calculator kicks in. An 80% gain versus a 50% loss. The odds are clearly in your favor. This should be easy money. Let's break down what seems obvious. You have a 50% chance of gaining 80% and a 50% chance of losing 50%. The arithmetic mean, the simple average we all learned in school, gives us 0.8 plus negative 0.5 divided by 2 equals 0.15, or a 15% average gain per coin toss. 15%. That's better than most investments. Logic screams, take this deal. So, let's imagine we gather a million people, each starting with $100, and have them play this game for 50 rounds. What would you expect to happen? If you're thinking like most people, you'd expect the majority to end up wealthier than when they started. After all, the math is on their side, right? Here's where mathematics delivers its crushing blow to our intuition. When we do this, something extraordinary happens. The average wealth of all participants grows exponentially, just as our arithmetic would predict. The numbers climb higher and higher, creating a beautiful upward curve that would make any investor salivate. But here's the devastating twist. While the average soars, the median, the amount that represents the typical person's outcome, plummets to a measly $7.20. Rate that again. Start with $100, play a game where every single flip favors you, and after 50 rounds, the most likely outcome is that you'll end up with about $7. This isn't a mathematical error or a computer glitch. This is the just one more paradox, and it's about to shatter everything you thought you knew about favorable odds. To understand this paradox, we need to trace the path of destruction step by step. Let's start with our $100 and see what happens with just a few flips. Flip heads. $100 times 1.8 equals $180. We're up $80. Flip heads again. 180 times 1.8 equals $324. We're up $224. But then flip tails. $324 times 0.5 equals $162. Wait a minute. We flipped two heads and one tail, winning two out of three times, and we're only up $62. That's less than winning the first flip alone. Here's where the cruel mathematics becomes clear. Let's look at the simplest case. One heads, one tails. Starting with $100, heads first, then tails. $100 times 1.8 times 0.5 equals $90. Tails first, then heads. $100 times 0.5 times 1.8 equals $90. Either way, we end up with $90. We've broken even in terms of wins and losses, yet we've lost $10. How is this possible when every individual flip seemed favorable? The answer lies in understanding the difference between additive and multiplicative processes, a distinction that reveals why our intuitive arithmetic fails us so catastrophically. In our coin game, each flip doesn't add or subtract a fixed amount. Instead, it multiplies our entire wealth by some factor. This multiplicative nature creates a mathematical environment where the lower we go, the less we can gain, but losses compound in devastating ways. Think about it. When you have $100 in flip heads, you gain $80. But when you're down to $50 in flip heads, you only gain $40. Meanwhile, when you have $100 in flip tails, you lose $50. And when you have $200 in flip tails, you lose $100. This asymmetry is the trap. The multiplicative nature of the game means that losses have a compounding effect that gains can never fully recover from. Imagine we map out all possible outcomes like branches on a tree. We start at $100. After one flip, we can reach either $180, heads, or $50, tails. From $180, we can reach $324, heads again, or $90, tails. From $50, we can reach $90, heads, or $25, tails. Notice something crucial. There are multiple paths to reach $90, and this becomes the most common outcome because it can be reached by any combination of equal heads and tails. Here's perhaps the most psychologically devastating aspect of this paradox. At every single decision point, the next flip looks attractive. Starting with $100, you can gain $80 or lose only $50. When you're at $90, you can gain $72 or lose only $45. Even when you're down to $25, 
you can gain $20 or lose only $12.50. Every single flip in isolation offers better upside than downside, yet the cumulative effect is financial ruin for most players. This is why it's called the just one more paradox. Each individual decision seems so obviously good that you keep thinking, just one more flip, the odds are in my favor. The paradox reveals itself anywhere that outcomes multiply rather than add, and where we focus on individual decisions rather than long-term compound effects. But mathematics doesn't just reveal problems, it also provides solutions. In 1956, John Larry Kelly Jr. discovered a principle that cuts through this paradox like a sword through darkness. Kelly asked a different question. Instead of betting everything on each flip, what if we only bet a fraction of our wealth? Let's explore this step-by-step step with a concrete example. Instead of betting our entire $100 on each flip, what if we bet only one-tenth, just $10 each time? Here's how this changes everything. When we flip heads, 80% gain on our bet. We win 80% of our $10 bet equals $8. Our new total wealth equals $100 plus $8 equals 108 cents. This means our wealth is multiplied by 1.08. When we flip tails, 50% loss on our bet. We lose 50% of our $10 bet equals $5. Our new total wealth equals $100 minus $5 equals $95. This means our wealth is multiplied by 0 0.95. Now here's the crucial insight. If we flip one heads and one tails, the most common outcome, our wealth gets multiplied by 1.08 times, 0 0.95, equals 1.026. We end up with 2.6% more money than we started with. By betting only a fraction of our wealth, we've transformed a losing game into a winning one. Kelly went further. He developed a formula to determine the exact fraction of wealth we should bet to maximize our long-term growth rate. Kelly's original formula for optimal betting fraction is F equals PB minus Q slash B. Let's break down what each variable means. P equals probability of winning equals 0.5, 50% chance of heads, Q wheel, probability of losing, 0.5, 50% chance of tails, B, the ratio of amount won to amount bet. Now here's where we need to be careful about B. In our coin game, when we win, heads, we gain 80% of our bet. When we lose, tails, we lose 50% of our bet. So B equals 0.8, we win 80 cents for every dollar bet. Plugging into Kelly's formula, F equals 0.5 times B 0.8 minus 0.5 divided by 0.8 equals 0.4 minus 0.5 divided by 0.8 equals negative 0.1 divided by 0.8 equals negative 0.125. Wait, this gives us a negative fraction. This means Kelly's traditional formula is telling us not to play this game at all because it's fundamentally unfavorable. But we discovered earlier that fractional betting can make this game profitable. What's going on? The issue is that Kelly's original formula assumes we win a fixed multiple of our bet and lose our entire bet, like in traditional gambling. Our coin game is different. We can lose more or less than our entire bet depending on the outcome. For our specific game, we need to use the geometric mean approach. If we bet fraction F of our wealth and we expect equal heads and tails over time, our wealth gets multiplied by Square root 1 plus 0 0.8 F times 1 minus 0 0.5 F. This square root represents the geometric mean, the right way to average multiplicative processes. To find the optimal F, we maximize this expression using calculus. Taking the logarithm first, which doesn't change where the maximum occurs but makes the math easier, we want to maximize 0 0.5 times the natural logarithm of 1 plus 0 0.8 F plus 0 0.5 times the natural logarithm of 1 minus 0.5 f, taking the derivative and setting it equal to 0. 0 0.5 times 0 0.8 divided by 1 plus 0 0.8 f minus 0 0.5 divided by 1 minus 0 0.5 f equals 0. This simplifies to 0 0.8 divided by 1 plus 0 0.8 f equals 0 0.5 divided by 1 minus 0 0.5 f. Cross multiplying and solving. 0 0.8 times 1 minus 0 0.5 f equals 0 0.5 times 1 plus 0 0.8 f. 0 0.8 minus 0 0.4 f equals 0 0.5 plus 0 0.4 f. 0 0.3 equals 0 0.8 f. f e equals 0 0.375. So the optimal fraction is 37.5% of our wealth. When we bet 37.5% of our wealth, 
heads. Our wealth multiplies by 1 plus 0 0.8 times 0 0.375 equals 1.3. Tails. Our wealth multiplies by 1 minus 0 0.5 times 0 0.375 equals 0 0.8125. For equal heads and tails, square root of 1.3 times 0 0.8125 equals 1.028. That's a 2.8% gain per flip on average, turning our losing game into a consistent winner. When we run our simulation again with a million people, each betting exactly 37.5% of their wealth according to the Kelly criterion, something beautiful happens. The median wealth now grows steadily alongside the average. The typical person ends up wealthier, not poorer. The just one more paradox teaches us to recognize non-ergotic systems, systems where individual outcomes differ dramatically from population averages. In such systems, focusing on average returns can be not just misleading but catastrophic. The paradox appears whenever 1. Outcomes multiply rather than add 2. We focus on individual decision favorability rather than long-term compound effects. 3. We confuse arithmetic means with geometric reality. The paradox doesn't just apply to gambling or investing. It appears in career decisions where each individual opportunity looks promising but compounds into career stagnation. It appears in relationships where each individual conflict seems manageable but multiplies into irreparable damage. It appears in environmental and social policies where each individual decision seems reasonable but compounds into systemic collapse. The just one more paradox reminds us that in mathematics, as in life, the most dangerous phrase might just be, the odds are in my favor. The question isn't whether the odds favor each decision, but whether the mathematical structure of the game itself favors long-term success. And that, perhaps, is the most important lesson of all. That good decisions aren't just about good odds. They're about understanding the mathematical nature of the game you're actually playing.